Hi, it's Arjun from Wizards.exe here. In this video, I'm going to go over how to configure and program a Rev Color Distance Sensor. And this works for both the original sensor and the Color Sensor V2, though the Color Sensor V2 is better. So the first step is I'm going to go and conf go to Configure Robot and go. I'm going to create a new configuration. I'm going to go and go to I2C I squared C bus three as I've con I've plugged in it plugged it into the I2C port label three. I'm going to hit add, select the rev color range sensor or rev color distance sensor V2 as it might be on your device, and I'm going to call it color distance. And I'm just going to hit done. I'm just going to check it's there. So I'm going to hit done and save. And I'm going to call it color distance test. Okay. So now it's restarting the robot. The first thing I'm going to go over is how to program the distance function because it's much easier to program the distance function. The color the color function is going to be a little bit more complex. I'm going to go into the block programming menu. I'm going to go into blocks. I'm going to create a new op and call it color distance test. In order to get the distance, it's very simple. So I'm first going to drag a telemetry block. If you want to learn about that, watch our telemetry video, gamepad input and telemetry video. I'm going to go to utilities, telemetry, and I'm just going to add data. Very simple telemetry block. And then we're going to go to sensors, rev color sensor v2. Scroll down. And you can call the get distance function. So I'm going to call the get distance unit um, centimeters. So I'm going to get it my distance in centimeters. And this is very similar to the rev two meter distance sensor. These blocks for distance. I'm just going to call put the key as distance so I know what I'm looking at. Now I'm going to save and I'll show you on camera um, how this works. Now you can see that I have the color sensor, color distance sensor right here. I'm going to select color distance test and hit in it and play. Now you can see that on the screen right now there's one value and it's like 5.45 and then a bunch of other numbers. And this is the value that the color distance sensor is currently returning when it's too close to something. When it starts getting a little bit further away, it's going to give slightly better values. The distance sensor and the color distance sensor isn't doesn't have very large of a range, as it's more meant for um, seeing if something's there or not there. So as um, the folks from Rev put it, it's a sensor that can be used in phones to see if the phone is held up to your ear, which is very useful in some things. For example, to see if there's a ball there or a block there. That's very useful, but the main the main focus of the color sensor v2 is in its color functions if you want to use distance and you want a very accurate distance use the rev distance sensor but otherwise i'm going to get into how to program color now there are two ways that your color sensor can actually you can get the color that your color sensor senses there's one way called rgb or red green blue and another called hue saturation value or hsv and the way that First Global recommends to do it in the First Global guide is called RG, is RGB because it's much simpler than HSV. The difference is, though, that HSV is a much more consistent read, while RGB is just way simpler to use. And I'm going to go over RGB first, and then we're going to go over HSV. So RGB stands for red, green, and blue. And this means that it essentially just breaks up the three diff the colors that you get, the color that it reads, into a red portion, a green portion, and a blue portion. Because with red, green, and blue, you can create any color you want, essentially. So I'm going to go back into the color distance test, and we're going to go over um, how to pro get the RGB values. And this is very simple. You just there's uh, options for it. So I'm going to just duplicate this telemetry block and delete the distance. Then I'm going to go to sensors, rev color sensor V2, and you can get your blue right there, your green right there, 
and your red is at the bottom. So I'm just going to choose red, and I'm going to type in red. I'm going to do the same for green and blue. I'm just going to duplicate this block and change this to green, and then duplicate the second one and change it to blue. Now I've gotten the red, green, and blue components in. I'm going to save this op mode, and we'll see. I'm going to show you how it performs. So now I'm going to test this program, and so I'm going to select color distance test, hit in it, and play. Now you can see right now that the values are very even for red, green, and blue in the telemetry, and this is because it's seeing white, and white, your all three, all three values are going to be very high. For black, all three values are going to be very low. So, I'm going to have, I have a red piece of paper here, and if I shine it on here, it has to be around a few centimeters off in order to detect it correctly. You can see that the red value is much higher than the green and blue value. So this is really good. Your robot can easily detect that it is red. For the green, you can see that it's still, the green value is fairly high. The red value and blue value are a little bit closer, but no big deal. You can still detect that. Now I have a blue piece of paper here. And blue piece of paper right here, the green and the blue values are a lot closer. So you can see they're very close to each other, which isn't very good. Meaning that your robot might have trouble detecting if this is blue or green. Now I have a light green piece of paper. And this, since this piece of paper is a little bit lighter... Now it's hard to detect if it's green, blue, or red, or any other color, because the values are so much closer to each other. Same with this light blue piece of paper here. The values are so close together that it's hard to detect which is which. Now, I have these pink, yellow, and orange pieces of paper. With these pieces of paper, it's still very hard, because with your robot in the RGB, you can, you can surely detect what color it is, but it requires a little bit more code in order to figure out what is pink, what is yellow, and what is orange. What we A solution for this is to use HSV, or hue saturation value. And this is a different way to f determine measure color than RGB, which is better for things like using on your robot to detect what the color is. The first thing that I'm going to do is explain the different parts of HSV. And on screen you can see that there's a color cone with um, three arrows, one for H, one for S, and one for V, or one for hue, one for satur saturation, and one for value. So the first thing that I'm going to go over is hue. So hue is around um, the flat of the cone, around the axis of it. And you can see that hue tells you, like, what color it is. For example, hue could be red, green, yellow, cyan, blue, purple, anything like that. And hue goes around the circle. So if you actually take the face of the cone, that is your color wheel. It has almost every color in it, except for um, every bright color in it. So, value is brightness, so this will go between 0 to 1, where 0 is completely black and 1 is completely white, the brightest color there is. And then saturation is the amount of gray there is in a particular color, so how, how close it is to white, how far it is away from the cone's axis. And this, again, will be from 0 to to 1 or 0 to 100 depending on your application. We can do this, this is a little bit hard, more coding to do, but there's another place where we get color from and this is in the utilities color menu. You can see that there is many more things like that. So we're first going to go to variables and create a variable and call it color current color. You need one of these variables for every color distance sensor you're using for in color mode. And we're going to bring a set current color block out, go to utilities, go down to color, click on it, and go down. And you can see there's a bunch of different options here for 
RGB to color, ARGB to color, HSV to color, and AHSV to color, and then text to color also. So we're going to pick ARGB to color. So this essentially takes the RGB value and converts it into um, a block specific color variable. And this is something that you don't need to understand in order to be able to understand RGB and HSV. There's also the alpha channel, which helps, um, which tells you the opacity or how clear the color is. We're going to include this just so we get the full sensor reading into our HSV value, but you don't need to know, un really understand what an alpha value is. So next, I've dragged that and I have the variable call. I'm going to go back to sensors and rev color sensor v2. I'm just going to drag this out here. I'm going to duplicate this for all of them and then change the values to change the different colors. Now you can see here that um, I have a set current color call that calls the color from our color distance sensor. Again, if you had two color sensors, you'd probably want to change that, but since we only have one called color distance, we're completely fine how we are. Now I'm going to drag a telemetry block, um, and I'm going to give the telemetry for the HSV. So I'm going to go to telemetry.addData. First, I'm going to set, set the hue, and in order to get the hue, we go back to the utilities color, you can see that there's a bunch of these green data blocks. I'm going to drag hue out here and then set the variable to current color. And I'm going to duplicate this block for saturation and value. Now I have it so that we have the telemetry giving the hue, saturation, and value of our um, color sensor through the current color variable. And this is very useful. Um, the color variables are also very useful, so we could put this current color variable at the top of our program, at the top of the loop, and then instead of calling um, these green data blocks here directly from the color distance sensor, we could call it from our color variable as to, so that we don't call the sensor as many times. So you can see we can call the red, green, blue, and alpha directly from our color variable. So now I'm going to save the op mode and I'm going to show you how much easier it is to actually use. Now I have my setup here. I'm going to select color distance test, hit init and play. Now you can see that when I shine this over the blue, you can see that the hue is approximately 190. If you search up this hue on the internet, you're going to see or check it on a color wheel you're going to see that that hue is meant for a blue. Same for a green. You see that the hue is approximately 90, 95. That's going to result for a green. Same for the red. You can see that the hue is approximately 360. And then all of these, you can just take a look at the hue and just be a little bit more specific with it. So the hue is essentially all you need. Now, for example, if you have a black carpet and you want to see a blue line, maybe you want the, sat the value to be a greater than 0.5 to make sure that you're not uh, accidentally trigger triggering over the black. Because if I'm on a white, which is essentially near the center of the cone, you're going to see that the hue is jumping around a lot. So if it's on white, you're not going to get very good values. With, when it's white, you might be better off using RGB or just use not disregarding hue and using just value and saturation. So that's a very good, hue is doing a lot better and you can use a color wheel and a color cone in order to figure out which um, the saturation and value return between zero and one and the hue is between zero and 360 because the color wheel is done in degrees while the saturation and value, which make it a cone, are done between 0 and 1. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and email wizards.exe at gmail.com with any questions. Thank you.